Guides here everybody with another Down and Dirty Guide. Before we get into this episode, just a note. I'm getting a lot of requests for help in the comments area for issues with your servers. Almost all of your questions have already been asked and answered over at the Daisy CC TK website, so I'd recommend just going there for any additional support. If you can't search and find the answer, simply post a new topic on your question, but do try to search for your issue on the forums there first. To set up scheduled restarts and messaging on your server, you'll need to download BattleEye Extended Controls, or simply called BEC. This little app attaches onto BattleEye and lets you perform automated tasks, set various levels of admin and mod powers, etc. We won't be going into all the stuff it can do, but you're welcome to read all the different things it can do from its website. Link in the description below. Once you've downloaded it, open up your instances config folder. It's in your Arma 2 OA install folder, followed by at daisy config. We'll be messing around with instance one, so let's open up the one folder. In here, let's make a new folder called BEC. Click and drag all the files over from your BEC download and there, it's now installed. We're gonna need to configure BEC, so let's open up the BEC folder and then open up the config folder. You're gonna have to rename almost all the files in this folder, just removing the underscore example portion of each file name. Now before we get into editing these files, I want to say that you can use any text editor to modify these files, but I highly recommend downloading and installing Notepad++. It's gonna help you a lot in the long run. So first off, let's open up the config file and go through some of the lines here. You shouldn't need to modify the IP field, so that can be left at default. The port number should only be changed if your instance is running from a different port. VE path should be pointing to the BattleEye folder for your instance, so let's open up Windows Explorer, then go to your Arma 2 OA install folder, at daisy config, 1, and then BattleEye. Then I'll just grab the address, copy it, and back in my config file I'll paste it. Now scroll a bit down through the miscellaneous section until you find the server exe name line. Remove the hashtag and rename the exe to arma2oa server underscore one dot exe. The exe has to match whatever your instance's server exe is, so if you're unsure, just go into your instance's config folder to find it. Once you've changed that up, save the config file and now you can close it. Now let's open the scheduler.xml file by right clicking it and choosing edit or edit with notepad++. If you just double click it to open it, it's probably going to open up in your internet browser. Scroll down to around line 120 and then select and delete all the previous lines except for the first two. Now this is just going to be a basic restart schedule. If you want to restart the server at like exact times of the day, head over to the website for Beck and go into the install and configure section to get more info on the abilities of the scheduler. So let's have a message pop up every 15 minutes or so. Each action you want to happen on the server needs its own job, so let's edit this first job here. The time tag is split into hours, minutes, and seconds. So let's change the middle two numbers to 15, and the last two numbers to zeros. In the command tag, change the message to something like, this message happens every 15 minutes. Make sure you leave the space after the number 1, or else it's not going to work. Now we'll have an automated message happen every 15 minutes in the game in the chat area. Now let's restart the server. On job ID number 1, change the hour value on the time tag to 06 and change the minute value to 00. In the command tag, let's change the entire line to just hashtag restart. Now the server will start every 6 hours automatically. Really tough there. Of course, you're going to want to send messages to your users about an impending restart. So make sure to set up some schedule messages that happen a couple minutes before the restart to let them know. You need to make a new job for each warning. Like if you want a warning to happen every 30, 15, 5 and 2 minutes before a restart, you'll need to make a new job for each warning. Hey, nobody said adminning was fun and easy. The rest of the scheduler has some other jobs showing you examples of various configs, so definitely check those out later. For now though, delete all the jobs after your restart job, but make sure to leave the closing scheduler tag at the very bottom. After that, save and close the file. Now we'll need a way to manually start up BEC, so let's go into our BEC installation folder and right click to create a new text file. Rename the file to BEC start with an extension of BAT or BAT. Right click and edit the file and type in BEC.exe space dash F space config.cfg, then save and close the file. If you did everything right, you should be able to open up BEC now by double clicking the batch file. BEC will wait until it finds the server exe, and since my server isn't running yet, I'll just close out of BEC for now. Now that the scheduler is set up, let's go over how the day and night options work. Head over into Control Center and choose the configuration option. On the basic tab, we have a time section near the bottom. Adjusting the time zone slider will offset the in-game time for the server. 
For example, if my server is located in UTC-6 and I want the in-game time to be two hours ahead of that time, I can set the slider ahead two notches. If you check on the only daytime option, your in-game time will be 11 a.m. every time you restart the server. If you want your server to be daytime 24-7, You'll have to restart your server at least every 6 to 7 hours, because time is still going to pass in game. Without a restart, the server will eventually become nighttime, even with the only daytime option. Lastly, let's go over hosting a different map. Back in the same place where we adjust the day night system, choose the drop down for the mission template, and then choose the map you want. In this case, I'm going to go with Lingor. Most of the time, the database name field should automatically change to the map you choose, but if it doesn't, just change it manually. Hit save configuration, and there your server will now load up the Lingor map. Really tough. Okay, I lied. There's one more step. Just like when we were setting up Control Center in the first guide, you need to use Daisy Commander to install Lingor. If you don't have the Lingor files installed, your server's not gonna work. The same goes for any other map mod you use. You need to download the files as well as change the mission template and database name to match the map that you want. That's it for this guide. In the next guide, we'll be going over changing some things manually in the database, including how to add some buildings to your map and changing up your starting gear. After that guide, I'll have two to three advanced server guides. The advanced videos are going to answer any advanced questions that you guys have, so stay tuned for the survey in the next guide. As always, fellow server admins, keep on zipping. Um, where do I go? No, 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 get up, up, get up, get up, get up.